Hello there. Just off on the start of my first walk since Christmas. Let's have a look at the weather. It's absolutely stunning today. I'll just turn it round this way for you. It's beautiful weather. I'm going to walk up under the summit of the Cheviot today and maybe just pass it and try and head towards the top of the hen hole or Brizzle crags, see if I can pitch my tent. There's no wind forecast, just about 20 mile an hour gusts. So I've bought the MSR, should be enjoyable. Nice tent, so I'll uh, start my walk. Certainly caught the nice weather for it today. There's Hedge Hope, looking back towards the Langley crags. And cold law. It's a beautiful day. The moon's out. It's just two o'clock. There's the farm. Onwards and upwards. Onwards and upwards. Well, dear me, I don't know whether it's an age thing or what, but I've had to take my hat off. I'm sweating like a pig. My glasses are off because the sweat is running and the glasses won't stay on my head. But uh, I'm pretty high now. I'm just going to start seeing the state of these quad tracks. Doesn't look too bad up to here. Here's your grace butts and that here. So if we come round, it's just starting to get chewed up. The last time I come, it was a disgrace on the top. So I'll do a bit more video in today. And we'll have a look at the state of the paths. And we'll see... We'll see how much the so-called landowners, the shooting lot, care for the land. Because we leave no trace. And yet the blooming quad rikes, they wreck it. But I suppose it all recovers and it's all part of the economy, isn't it? I mean, you can't really have too strong an opinion because everybody does their own thing. So I'll do some more videoing in a minute. Right, that's the top of Scald Hill now. There's the Cheviot. The sun is still out. I'm hoping to be up on the top to catch the sun going down. But we'll see. The quad damage isn't too bad. A few bits here and there. There's Hedge Hope, still nice and bright. There's the valley. The moon. It's going cold now, I'm getting higher. Really cold. It's only going to be freezing tonight though, zero, so got the big sleeping bag. Treated myself to some down booties. I'll have a look at them in a bit. Right, we'll come back in a bit. I don't know whether I'm going to make it for the sunset. I'm running out of time. Still got a fair bit to go. Gotta get to the top of here, then the path should start shortly after. Right, we're just on the summit path now. There's the start of the damage of the quad when I've took the fence down. So we'll walk along the path. To be fair, the damage is uh, clearing up quite quickly. There, nothing, nothing unusual. I might drop back down the way I came to camp because it's really windy. I'm, now I'm on the top on this side. I was going to go over to the hen hole, but it's getting misty and I'm running out of light. And the damage isn't as bad as I thought. Look, it's uh, Approaching the summit now. Damage isn't as bad as I thought. We're in the mist. Lost the sun now, it's just up there behind that lot. It's just a bit orange. I was hoping to catch a nice sunset, but uh, I'll stop me time in a minute and I'll see how long it took me to get up here. It's been a kill me today. 17 and a half kilos, obviously. Uh, 
site, losing the fitness. Well, this damage it's actually uh, the weather obviously settles the roots because it's that boggy and wet up here. It soon uh, it soon settles down, doesn't it? It is a shame. I mean, it's eroded enough as it is. I mean, look. They're just, they're just eating away at it. Looks like they've been doing looking donuts over here. Shame, like. Right, there's the summit. Summit of the Cheviot. I don't know if they have a little look this way or not. There was the summit just there, so I'm just having a look. There's quite a lot of damage on this side. I suppose it'll take a fair bit of rain to level it out. It's freezing now, I'll have to get my gloves on in a minute. It's below freezing now. Just gonna see if there's somewhere I can pitch along here. Piece of ice here. There's the sun just going down. It's a right mess, this is up here, isn't it? It's a right mess. I mean, we leave no trace when we come camping, and yet we're not allowed to do it. You know what I mean? I think not. I think we're the least of the problems looking at this. I've obviously taken the fences down to go through as well. Right. It's very windy tonight. You can see the tent it's blowing right in. I couldn't actually pitch it the like tail end into the wind because I needed to get the pitch flat because I've had to come down from the summit a little bit. So I'm on a slope, but I've had to pitch the tent across, across the slope to get a flat bit for the sleeping bag. But the wind is obviously, uh, so I have to pull up with some condensation because the two skins are touching. But anyway, I haven't sorted out my bits and pieces yet. I've had one of these uh, noodle kits from Sherwoods again. Just a change from the camping dinners. So I've put some ham in there, some spring onions and some uh, snap, uh, sugar snap peas and uh, the sauce. That'll be tasty. I've got pot noodles and different things for later. All my rubbish is in that side, but it'll all be tidied up in a bit. I've put my sleeping mat to... I've blown my sleeping mat up at the minute, but uh, I've not got my sleeping bag out yet. It's just coming up to six o'clock. The temperature has really dropped. It really has dropped. But uh, I've got these new down boots. Rab booties. They're synthetic, because I tried the down ones and uh, I couldn't get them on my feet the way they opened. But these uh, synthetic ones, I mean, they're smashing. They're keeping my feet uh, nice and warm. So uh, if you've got the gear, it should be all right. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you the sleeping system in a bit. Well, it's just coming up to 10 o'clock. I've been having a bit of a snooze because 
I've lost all the signal on the phone. I've got the radio, but I've lost all the signal on the phone. There's no 3G, no 4G. It's just a letter E. So it's E, E, Edge, apparently. So I can only presume the signal's dropped off because it's very misty outside. But what I've noticed, I mean, look at this. I've never, look at that, I've never, never absolutely running this. Look. See, it's all in the bags and everything. It's, uh, I've never seen condensation like it. Look, it's like bloody rain. So I'm, li I'm lying here in the sleeping bag and every time there's a good gust of wind, I'm getting a face full of water. I mean, I love the MSR tent, I really do. It's so roomy in that, especially when I come out with the sun. But honestly, it was a wrong choice at tent tonight. For one, the side is constantly bellied in, so the outer's touching the inner. Obviously, that's what's causing the condensation. Because it's just so windy. I mean, it's only forecast 20 miles an hour winds, but uh, it's just relentless. It's not stopped. But I mean, I've been asleep, so it doesn't actually bother me. I mean, I'm dry enough in the sleeping bag, but it just goes to show, you know, mesh is no good in the winter. No good at all. And the MSR tent is certainly not for the Cheviots. I think it's, it's more for a woodland edge. Well, I mean, I've still enjoyed myself. I've had a nice dinner, I've had a couple of coffees. But I'm just snoozing, really. But I don't think this winter camping's for me. The, the nights are just too long in the tent. And if you lose your phone signal, you've had it. But uh, I'm just shocked at this condensation. New little light up here. I got that off Boys in the Wood. Uh one one of his uh, subscriber giveaways. Smashing little light actually. It's uh, it's got three settings on it. Don't know why you need a flashing one, but uh, I mean I just can't believe this condensation. I mean look at it. And that's that's the vent at the end, and look, absolutely. It's it's just full of water. But this is ridiculous out here. All my kids out there, but the kids drying off. I mean, look at this. Look at it. God, hopeless. This side of the tent is absolutely bone dry because the outer is a good six, seven inches away. But on this side, because it, because it's blowing in constantly in the wind, it's just a constant wind. I can't do anything about that. I've got it tied out as tight as I can. It's just, uh, it's just, it's just flexing. The tent's flexing too much. Look, it needs to be up there. But uh, it's obviously a useless tent in the wind. Absolutely useless. I think uh, it's going to be the Van Gogh tent from now on. I'll keep this for the summer. I mean, I do, do enjoy this tent. It's spacious, it's airy, but... Uh, so, so it needs to be up there, look. But it just... The wind is just forcing it down. Not to worry. I've just made myself a nice little uh, hot chocolate there. There's my bag of rubbish. Bit of rubbish in the boots. Look, this, this is frozen, the top of that, look. But... Uh, Hey, God, got some clutter in here. I got some tidying up in the morning. I'll tell you what, these Rab 1100 sleeping bags, they're sent 1100, I mean. Unbelievable. I mean, it's so lofty, it's just... Uh, I mean, I've got my thermals on. I'll, I'll turn the camera around in a minute, hang on. Yes, so tonight I'm actually I'm actually sleeping in my down jacket on top of the thermal. But uh, it's freezing cold in the tent. It's obviously but because uh, well it's all the mesh, isn't it? But, I mean I've lost I've lost YouTube, I've lost uh, I've lost my reception. But I'm just chilling. <laughs> 
It's my first camp since Christmas. I mean, I had a cracking walk up in the in the in the sunlight. It went a bit misty up on the summit, and then I couldn't. I was going to go and camp at the top of the hen hole of Brizzle Crags, but I wouldn't have found my way safe enough in all the in all the marshes and that. So I just dropped back down this side. I'm about twenty meters below the summit. Twenty twenty five meters. I've had to pitch my tent sideways. <laughs> my belly's full, I've had plenty of hot drinks, I've had a snooze. If anything, I'll have a rest. It's nice to be out. But I think uh, the, the, these long nights in, in the tent, they don't actually suit me. I'll probably do one camp a month, if that, and then just wait and wait. I don't mind if it gets dark about seven o'clock, but half past four is no good. The equipment's up to the job. Well, the other tents up, the other two tents I've got are up to the job. Both van goes. You don't get this sort of condensation, but you haven't got all the mesh. The, obviously, the mesh plus this one, the outside skirt's quite high off the floor. So, unless unless you unless you've been on the tube, you, you don't understand how hostile it is. All the hills down south and that. I mean. They think they get a bit of wind. They want to come up the northeast. We have the wind every day and it's just relentless. It's a lovely, quiet part of the country. The scenery is fantastic. The hills are fantastic. And it's so quiet, you don't see so many people, but it's just, it is cold, windy weather. You just have to put up with it. And, and the uh, Cheviot Hills, they're particularly cold. And it's always blowing a gale. The mountain forecast said 15 to 20 mile an hour light winds. But uh, it, it can't be much more than that. But it's just constant. It doesn't actually drop. That's why the tent sides all bowed in. Because the, the wind is just one constant wind. There's no let up. So it's a, it's a hostile place. <laughs> Something else I've been using off the boys in the wood giveaway was that little windshield there. I've got my foil windshield and I've got a great big tall one, but I didn't have a rigid small one, so I've tried that out tonight. It's, it's barely any weight difference, but the foil one's obviously lighter. I don't know how my bag was 17 and a half kilos tonight. I suppose you've got the extra windshield, you've got your down booties, that's like 500 grams. I've got a couple of extra lights. I've got the gadget for blowing up the airbed. That's actually handy if it's cold. I'll just get it. It's got a light on it as well. It's actually... Uh... If I can get the light on, there we go. It's actually... Uh... It's a good little unit. Because obviously the X-Ped mats, they come with the uh, snozzle sump, uh, <coughs> pump sack, which is perfect if the weather's nice and you've got your door open. But if you're just confined to the tent, that's a good, uh, good little gadget. But again, it all adds to the weight. And I'd rather carry less weight, to be honest. So, But uh, 17 and a half kilos, it blew me nigh on kill me getting up here tonight. One hour, 50 minutes from the car to the summit. That's my slowest ever. Although it's my first trip out since winter. It's still slow. Well, I mean, I'm not as fit as I was, obviously. 16 March, so you obviously lose a bit of your, your pace. But uh, I can do it and I can do it comfortably, so what's it matter? There's no rush when you're wild camping. Well, I'm going to have this hot chocolate and uh, get my head down because it's uh, just gone up to 11 o'clock now. See you later. Good morning. I've had a cracking night's sleep. Absolutely roasting hot. I'll just turn this light up a bit. Roasting hot in this rab bag. But for the first time ever, I've had to keep my down jacket on, on top of the thermals. Why? Because of the wind. Obviously, I had issues with the tent last night, didn't I, uh, with condensation. Well, I thought it was condensation, and, but uh, 
I'll discuss that in a minute. It's a, uh, well, there's an old saying, isn't there? A bad workman blames his tools. Well, I think last night a bad camper, me, blamed his tent. I chose the wrong tent, basically. But uh, I'll, t I'll turn the thing round and we'll have a look. This was dripping last night, absolutely dripping. Look at it, it's perfectly bone dry. But as we can see out there, the outer, the outer is still pushing on it because of the wind. It's, we've just got constant wind from that corner all night. So obviously last night when the fog come down, it was coming straight under the side skirts of the tent and it was just hitting the mesh here. It was just hitting the mesh. So once the fog lifted in the night, I've woke up to a perfectly dry tent. So it goes to show condensation is cured by airflow. And my word, there's some airflow in here with all the mesh. So this is this is still pressing down up here. The top bar is still being pressed down by the wind. I'll see if I can open it up and show you. I'll just open this up. We can see now where the tent's been pushed in by the wind. It's it's just been constant all night. So basically, it's a it's a perfect tent for like a a woodland camp, a low level camp with no wind, hot weather, perfect, keeps the midges out. But unfortunately, it's not it's not a windy weather tent. And it's obviously not a driving rain mist, driving mist, driving fog tent. So, it, you know, each tent's obviously got its limitations. I mean, if I do a winter camp again, a long night one, I'll, uh, I'll use the, the Van Gogh Mirage because obviously it, it's, it's bomb proof for the wind and the skirts do come much further to the floor. But I just love this tent for its space. Now, MSR do an access tent as well. It's the same as this, little less. It's got more of a solid interior than mesh. And the, and the, and the middle bar actually comes down to the floor, both sides. I know RS Outdoors uses the access tent, but would I want to spend £500 and chance it on the Cheviot winds? I'm not sure. It's a pity I couldn't borrow an access tent just to see, see if it stands up to the... To the Cheviot winds. But I've had a great night's sleep. I mean, these red bags, absolutely amazing. Considering the tent, it's, it's probably not much warmer than outside because of the wind coming in here, but I've been absolutely lovely and warm. I had a snooze last night because I had no internet. I was up at 10 till about 11, having a drink and a snack. Went back to sleep at 11. Next thing I knew, it, well, it's six o'clock now. Unbelievable. I don't mind the, the sound of the tents flapping and that. I mean, it's quite a therapeutic. I'd, I just like being out. Still think the long, long nights don't suit me, though, in the tent. But I've enjoyed it. I'm going to have myself a coffee now and some porridge, get packed up. And... Uh, it's Saturday, I don't, I, don't, I don't have to rush back, but uh, I'd rather have the day at home if I'm up now. So, see in a bit. All packed up and ready to go. There's my bag. Monstrous thing it is. And there's where I was uh, pitched. You can see the flat bit just here. There's my gloves and my poles. Leave no trace. Just before it gets light now, so I'm just going to have a wander down to the car, so I'll speak in a bit. The sun's just starting to think about coming up. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful in the mornings. So I've just come down from the tube, which was nice and clear but really, really icy and cold in the window. There's no wind at all down here. There's Hedge Hope. 
bit of an orange sky over there and that plume of smoke that's turning orange looks lovely but there's like a little mound like a, a little hill just there and it appears to have like a cairn on it or something but this is the valley the Langley Valley I've come up and when you look further on everything's shrouded in cloud it's like everything's in an inversion from where we are it's lovely beautiful all the way around it's amazing it's moments like these when you when you enjoy a walk coming back down that the camp was worth it really nice that would look amazing from the top of the hedge hope Well, that's the end of the walk. I've just got down to the cars. You can see how cold it was in the night. You can imagine on the top. That's a day walker's car because it's still warm and it's just, I can hear it ticking. And there's two cars over there. They must have been camping because I've got ice on them. And I saw somebody moving about up by the crag up there before. So it's either the day walker or it could be the campers but it's been a good camp I couldn't have really have thinking about it I couldn't have avoided the disaster with the tent last night if I could have turned it 45 degrees the one way it would have given me more protection against the driving mist and fog but I, but I couldn't because uh, I was on a slope and had to have somewhere flat to sleep so the tent had to go the way it had to go and I think that's what that's what led to the site being pushed in all night. But I mean, condensation wise, it was fine. It was just that driving mist and rain. It just comes straight in the side. So I think the MSR. I'm just I'm just going to keep it for the for the summer and the woodland camps and that. Once you go above the tree line, I don't think it's got the the strength to take any wind. Which, in fairness, it says that on the website below tree line camping so well uh, I might look into another lightweight tent maybe a lower profile one obviously a four season tent but uh, well that's it for now I'm going to have my coffee which I made up on the top so I'll add it in a little flask so I'm ready to go see you next time